Hello, hello everyone. It is Monday morning. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Before we get started and get too far in, we want to let you know you can watch us every morning between 8 and 9 on your Facebook feed. You can also watch us on our Inform YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. Just go to inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute. I'm Scott Ingen. Lisa Bedell. I'm Dylan. And we have a surprise. She is back. She's Hi. Hi. There she is. She's returned to us. Yes. Not only did we miss you, the viewers missed you. So everyone who was worried and concerned, she is back. In the flesh. I am alive. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> yes. All is well. <laughs> We're glad to have you back. Thanks. It's good to be back. Good to be back in routine. Mm-hmm. I'm a big routine person. Mm-hmm. So when the alarm went off this morning, I was like, <laughs> oh boy. But here we are. Rude awakening. And you were set. We had like crazy weather last week. And you love that stuff. I do. Especially winter weather. That's mm. my jam. I love forecasting <laughs> it. I love talking about it. I, I love winter. Mm. You can hate me for that later <laughs> if you want. Um, so when I missed all of these blizzards, I missed two blizzards. Yes. yes. Two blizzards. Yeah, yes. So that was a bummer. But all is well. Happy to be back. You got lots of snuggle time in yes. with your baby. Yes. So. Snuggled my baby lots. So. Yeah, we're good. good. And now back with us. Monday mornings are always hard, whether you've been yeah. off for a little while or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My alarm also was a little bit. <laughs> Monday morning alarm is always an alarm you want to throw off the window. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we look a little puffy today, oh, but man. yes, cool. happy to be back. Dylan's going to talk. We can get a mix, though. Can we get yeah. a little, little scoop from you yeah. as well? You're going to talk a little bit about the roads. You want to talk a little bit about what we can expect weather-wise? Yeah. Sure. Today? I'll go first. Oh, yes. okay, fine. <laughs> Lisa introduced me first. Dylan, so just kidding. Go ahead, Dylan. Dylan. And then you can talk about it. You got used to it. not being here. Yeah, now. right? It's all about Dylan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is this person? <laughs> um, yesterday, we had that wind of the southeast that mm-hmm. did cause a little drifting and some roads, mainly in Minnesota side of things. I know 94, I drove yesterday a lot of spots where there's snow over the road. Mm-hmm. It's plowed, but it's slippery there, so be careful of that. In town, it's not bad. We were in town all morning. It's... Not bad at all, but once you get out of town, of course, west, we're tracking fog. Mm-hmm. So that freezing fog potential. There's, of course, freezing drizzle we're also looking at today in west central Minnesota, mm-hmm. where I just talked about they had that snow, that couple patches of snow on the interstate and side roads that make spots slippery. But in the valley, it's quiet, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, we've had a really big temperature split this morning, which has been kind of interesting. Grand Forks was in the single digits at one point, while Fargo was in the 20s to near 30. Mm-hmm. Um, it was all because of clouds. So where you didn't have clouds, it was colder this morning. Where you did have clouds, it was warmer. Regardless, temperatures will get up close to freezing by this afternoon, which sounds really nice, like 32 degrees. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be breezy, so it won't feel as nice outside. Um, And then we've got a chance of snow moving in Tuesday night into Wednesday. It's a little too soon to put numbers on it because we're a good like 48 hours away from officially seeing the snow move in. So, but I think Tuesday night into Wednesday, we're going to have some snow by Wednesday afternoon. You might have to break out the shovel, especially for areas along and south of I-94. So Fargo down to the North Dakota, South Dakota border. And the further north that you go, you're likely to get less and less, if any, snow with this. Um, that'll knock back our temps a bit. We'll be in the teens for highs on Thursday. Thursday morning looks cold, as we send mm. Dylan outside. <laughs> It'll be below zero. We should send you back outside. You just came back. God, I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's do it. Book it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then weekend looks better. Upper 20s to near 30, again, cool. for the first weekend of March. All so, right. yeah, a cool. little bit of ups and downs, but no big storms, no big yeah. blizzards That's good. on That's Monday. Good. That's good. So. You're um, welcome. Any big updates on The Bachelor while you were gone? <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, so I missed two episodes. The last episode was, well, Dylan got all caught up. I on caught up last night. I knew Lydia was coming back today. And I was like, like, oh, i got to catch up right. on The Bachelor. I'm caught home. up. I'm all ready to go. So it, it was kind of interesting because at the end of the last episode, the lead, Zach, The Bachelor, got COVID. Ooh. And somehow none of the girls got it, which, I mean, he's. That's weird. That's fishy. It is. I don't He's know how awfully close with yeah. a lot of them, so I don't know how that did happen. But uh, they did a virtual rose ceremony, which was really weird, but also kind of goofy and funny at the same time. I kind of didn't hate it. Um, and so now this week, they're moving on. They're going, I can't remember where the next place is. I have is. no idea. I don't watch that part. They're, they're moving on. Um, so yeah, we're down to like seven or eight mm. women I left. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know how they're all COVID, though, like. Yeah. They share germs. Conspiracy. They share too. Yeah, they do share a lot of germs <laughs> on that show. <laughs> They're starting to get, like middle schoolers. get a little more drama. And yeah. I saw the promo for tonight and he was crying in it. Ooh. So oh. Mm, dun, dun, Pour dun. the wine. Let's watch The Bachelor. <laughs> All right. That's, All right, that's a good tease. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Lydia. That. Thanks, Bye. Dylan. Appreciate yeah. you.
All right, uh, let's jump into some of our news headlines now. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we'll learn the fate of a man who caused a deadly crash in a construction zone on Highway 2 just outside of Grand Forks. Mm -hmm. A judge today is set to decide whether or not to accept a controversial plea deal that would give that man only two months in prison for his role in that accident. We've been tracking this story for you, covering it for some time. 61-year-old Dr. Eric Jane was actually killed in that crash, and his family pleaded with the judge last month to reject this deal, saying it's a slap on the wrist for 55-year-old Stephen Pachelski. Uh, troopers say that Pachelski never even braked when he slammed into a line of cars at a red light. Uh, in December, Pachelski accepted this plea deal that, as I mentioned, would only give him uh, two months in prison and two months of house arrest if the judge accepts it. So, of course, we will have a WDAY crew covering this for you today, and, of course, we'll tell you what happens on our evening newscasts. All right, also a pretty crazy story out of Minot where they're uh, investigating a police chase that happened over the weekend. It was in Ward County, of course. An 18-year-old driver is now facing attempted murder charges in this whole thing. We're also learning that an officer did fire their weapon during the chase. We had some wild cell phone video showing the right. crash this morning and over the weekend. Um, car, essentially an SUV, ran into three squad cars then kept going, ran into a building. <laughs> it was really crazy. So yeah. if you haven't seen that, go look it up. It's uh, worth Inform. your time. Inform.com, I believe you can find mm -hmm. it there. All right, so the suspect slammed into three squad cars, smashed into a building. But before all of this, the driver or the deputy say the driver tried running over one of their officers after they used spike strips to stop the car. The deputy then fired two shots at the vehicle. We now know that Joshua Chambers was the driver. He's facing attempted murder charge and more than a dozen other counts for things like drugs, fleeing, criminal mischief. Three other people were also inside the vehicle at the time. Two of those passengers ran away from police after that final accident, final crash into the building. Those two men were arrested for refusal to halt and for marijuana charges. The third passenger was a juvenile girl. She is not facing any charges, but the North Dakota BCI is still investigating the incident, and I'm sure there will be more coming out about exactly what all happened here. The whole thing is, is kind of a crazy, mm -hmm. crazy story. Uh, so West Fargo School District is on track to become the state's largest school district. Mm -hmm. Right now it's, it's in second place, but uh, the student population has been growing by 300 to 500 new students each year for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. the consultants who initially forecast this growth are saying it also does not appear to be slowing down anytime soon. Uh, they're expected to have close to 15,000 students over the next five years. Uh, most of the growth, as you probably know, south of I-94. District leaders already are eyeing potential new schools and even some additions to their current buildings because of it. All right. Today, a familiar face in the Fargo area is advocating for the living conditions of Ukrainian soldiers. Once again, you may remember that this guy, Mark Lindquist, was out camping for about two weeks in the Fargo-Moorhead area in the bitter cold back in December. Well, now he's kind of doing the thing again, but this time in West Fargo, he's not going to be camping, but he's walking. He is going to be walking 100 miles up and down Veterans Boulevard. He started the march early yesterday morning, so you, if you drive in that area, you might have already seen him. If you drive there today, you probably see him outside. He's taking on the cold without any food, without any money. He's wearing minimal winter gear. So he's doing this all for raising awareness about the conditions that Ukrainian soldiers are fighting in, essentially. Um, he's going to be out there continuing the march till 9 o'clock tonight. He's hoping to raise $50,000 for the cause for a veteran rehabilitation center in Kiev before March 1st. You can track his progress, if you'd like, on Facebook and Twitter throughout the day. We have a little video since he started yesterday. It goes through tonight, mm -hmm. and it's all, like, kind of frosty facial hair. <laughs> yeah. a little bit. on his beard <laughs> yes, and all that stuff. Yeah, he so he's, he's really toughing it out. Uh, talking about the weather again, this is a, a story and, and weather system that Lydia has been tracking for mm -hmm. us as well. She talked a lot about this this morning. Uh, a storm system, you know, we're dealing with the fog and light snow flurries, but kind of crazy weather across the U.S. We talked a lot about California and the mm -hmm. snow that was unusual and then flooding. Well, uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas area, areas overnight, extensive damage to buildings, kind of extreme weather, mm -hmm. tornadoes right. touching yeah. down. She mentioned, you know, the National Weather Service is probably out surveying right now to know just how strong. Um, seven tornadoes is what they're thinking right now. Touched down in Oklahoma, two in Kansas. Uh, just a mess. Some of the video that we were seeing this morning, devastating. Yeah. Just campers tossed around and, and homes devastated and of course when it happens overnight it's always a, a scary scary situation so you're going to continue to hear about that wild weather across the u.s mm -hmm. throughout the day here on wday as well yeah 
All right, we turn to the latest on the president's uh, student loan forgiveness plan now. Uh, it aims to lift millions of eligible borrowers out of student loan debt. Well, this week, the U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear those oral arguments this week after the plan was paused a while back due to uh, two legal challenges. It's something that's been an ongoing story for months now. But Biden's plan has already seen nearly 26 million students sign up for the program, all of which, which are eligible, eligible are now waiting as Washington and the Supreme Court reviews its legality. So. As this unfolds, of course, we'll be giving you updates and covering yeah. that as well. Affects so many people. I want to remind you, Hot Mike with Dom Izzo will be on here in about 45 minutes, mm -hmm. less than, 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra, also on Inform.com. I know he's going to be talking probably at least a little bit about the state high school hockey mm -hmm. tournament. We were sure. watching into what, two overtimes, a couple overtimes. Fargo South Shanley won the state tournament over Red River. You know, so Grand Fork schools always win. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, big upset. Yeah. Um, so I know we're probably going to be looking ahead. Lots of new <laughs> stuff happening, new state tournaments as well. But yeah. I know a lot of people in Fargo, Fargo, Fargo South specifically, Shanley, yeah. are probably still riding that high off the uh, incredible win. Uh, for state high school hockey in yeah. North Dakota. And in the NHL, the Wild won last night on a Krill Kaprizov hat trick uh, oh. in Minneapolis or St. Paul against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So Don might be talking about that too. Big okay. game for him. All right, also, before we let you go, we want to let you know about that deal we got going on for Inform.com right now. For your first three months, it's only going to cost you 99 cents. And that's going to get you access to all of our local stories, national headlines, Bison football coverage, as well as basketball and all the other sports going on right now. And, of course, all that important weather information you need to know as well. Oh, for sure. And we'll be back with more weather and all of these headlines and much more. A lot of updates. Uh, our next newscast is on at 11 this morning, 11 to 12. And this afternoon, again, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. Be sure to join us for WDAY News on Air. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. Have a good day.